Now it's good to be with you again this week as we look at another one of the miracles that the Lord Jesus performed. Last week we thought a little bit about two healings that the Lord Jesus did. We thought about Jairus' daughter whom he raised from the dead and then we also thought about this lady that had the issue of blood and how she was separated from the ones she loved because of this disease that she had and you remember how that she thought if I only touch the hem of his garment then I will be made whole and you remember how that there's that verse in Malachi that talks about the Lord Jesus and it says but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and it was said that that word for wings in Hebrew, uh, kanaf, just mean, can mean that the extremity of your garment or your, your tunic. And so she realised if she just had to touch the hem of his garment, then she would be made whole of her disease that she had. And it was said as well that anything that she did touch at home, you know, became unclean and had to be washed. And it was a very difficult disease to live with. But whenever she touched the clothes of the Lord Jesus, she was healed. And we saw how that the Lord Jesus asked who touched me and how that made her come forward and tell her, tell the Lord Jesus everything that had happened to her and what she had done. And we saw as well how Jairus' daughter was very sick. And while the Lord Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house, Jairus got the news that his daughter had actually died. And of course, the Lord Jesus said to Jairus, be not afraid, only believe. And the Lord Jesus was able to raise Jairus' daughter from the dead. And these were two things that were absolutely impossible for a man to do, is to raise someone from the dead or to heal someone of this disease. Because this lady had spent all that she had on doctors to try and be rid of this issue of blood but she was she grew worse rather than better so these things were two things that were impossible that the Lord Jesus was able to do because of who he was and we can think about the miracles that the Lord Jesus did and why he did them you know some people like you you'll see sometimes magicians who perform tricks and they do these tricks just to show people how clever they are or just to, to make people amazed and wonder at what they are able to do that, they, that other people can't do. And that's not the re reason why the Lord Jesus performed his miracles. The Lord Jesus always performed miracles to help people and also to show people who he was, not to be boastful or anything like that, but to show people that he was the Son of God and that they could put their trust in him for salvation. Because in the Old Testament, the, the Old Testament prophets foretold of one who would come, who would be able to open the eyes of the blind and open the ears of the deaf and raise the dead and do all these wonderful things. And the whenever the Lord Jesus came, he did these things and of course, people realised he must be the one that God had promised to send to be the saviour of the world. And so that's the reason why the Lord Jesus did many of these miracles that we're looking at today and looking at over the past number of weeks. Now the, the miracle that we'll be looking at today, there's two of them really, but again, but the miracle that we're looking at today is the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And you can read about this miracle in all of the Gospels. You'll read about it in Matthew chapter 14, in Mark chapter 6, in Luke chapter 9 and in John chapter 6. And all of the Gospel accounts, they all have um, different information in them just about what took place in this account of the this miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. And so it's good to read all of the accounts together because you, you get information in one gospel that maybe another gospel skips over. 
And so it's important to read all of the gospel accounts to get a complete picture. For instance, in Matthew's gospel, it talks about Peter walking on the water towards the Lord. And we'll talk about that in a wee minute. But that's not something that's mentioned in the other gospels. They skip over that bit. But you'll read uh, um, other details in the other gospel accounts that you'll maybe not get in Matthew. And for instance, also in Luke's gospel, you won't read about the Lord going into the mountain and the disciples being caught in the storm. That's something you'll get in Matthew and Mark and John, but you won't get it in the gospel of Luke. So it's important to look at all of the accounts together whenever you're considering this story. But this week we'll not be looking at Peter walking on the water. We'll be looking mostly at the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of John, their accounts of what happened on this occasion. Now, just after the death of John the Baptist, King Herod had put John the Baptist to death. And the disciples were very sad at this happening and they told the Lord Jesus about it and the Lord Jesus told the disciples um, there was many people coming and going and they, they hadn't got time to even rest or to mourn for John the Baptist. And so the Lord Jesus told the disciples come apart into a desert place and rest a while. And so the Lord Jesus and the disciples got into a boat on the Sea of Galilee and they went over into a desert place where they could just have time for themselves. And whenever the people along the shoreline saw the Lord Jesus departing on the boat, they decided to run around the lake to see where the Lord Jesus was going to arrive at so that they could see him because he had worked a lot of miracles in the towns along the shores of Galilee and a lot of people wanted to, to see the Lord Jesus again. Uh, the Sea of Galilee isn't very large, it's, it's only about six miles across by 13 miles in length and so it's quite easy for someone just to run around the other side of the lake rather than taking a boat across as the Lord Jesus had done. And whenever the Lord Jesus got out of the boat, of course there, there was a great multitude of people had already gathered awaiting his arrival on the shore. And instead of just dismissing the people and, and sending them away because they need, the disciples needed rest, and the Lord Jesus, the Bible says, had compassion upon the multitude because he saw them as like sheep not having a shepherd to care for them and so the Lord began to heal those that were sick and he began to teach them many things and as the day wore on the disciples came to the Lord Jesus and they said to him this is a desert place and the time is far past send the people away therefore into the countryside and into the villages round about that they may buy bread for there is nothing here for them to eat. And the Lord Jesus said to them, Give ye them to eat. And the disciples said to the Lord, Philip said, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread for them to eat? Now that was an awful lot of money, uh, because a penny back in those days was a day's wages. And so if you had two hundred pennies, it was nearly a year's wages. And the disciples said to the Lord Jesus, 200 penny worth of bread would not be sufficient for all these people to eat. For there was about 5,000 men, and besides there was women and children as well. So there, there was a great multitude of people had gathered to listen to what the Lord Jesus had to teach them. And the Lord Jesus asked the disciples, how many loaves have ye go and see? And so the disciples went around all the people to see if any had brought food with them. And Andrew found a little lad that had brought five barley loaves and two fish. And he brought him to the Lord Jesus. 
And Andrew said to the Lord Jesus, We have here a lad who has five barley loaves and two fishes, but what are they among so many? And the Lord Jesus said, Bring them here. And so they brought the five barley loaves and the two fish to the Lord Jesus. Now barley loaves, if we think about a loaf of bread today, it's, it's a big loaf that you might uh, take a week to eat. And, but in those days, a barley loaf was just a little small piece of bread that would maybe do your lunch. It wasn't very big at all. And so this little lad had brought five barley loaves and two fish, which were probably just meant for himself for his lunch. And the Lord Jesus asked for the loaves to be brought. And this verse here says, Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. And this little boy willingly offered his lunch to the Lord Jesus so that somebody else who didn't have any would be able to eat. And that's a wonderful sacrifice that this little boy made. And because of that little boy, the whole multitude of people were fed and th through this miracle that the Lord Jesus would do. So that's a lesson for us today as well. We may think that we are not able to do very much for the Lord at all, but if we are like this little boy and we do it out of a willing heart, then the Lord is able to use that for his own glory. And so the, this little boy gave the Lord Jesus his loaves of bread and his two fish. And the Lord Jesus said to the disciples, Make all the people sit down on the grass. And so they, they sat down in ranks of 50 and 100. And the Lord Jesus took the bread and the fish. And before he distributed it to the people, he lifted up his eyes towards heaven and gave thanks for the bread that they were about to eat. And this is very important because it reminds us that we also need to be thankful for everything that God has given us. Everything that we have in our lives has been given to us by God to enjoy. And you can think about the clothes that we wear and the food that we eat and maybe the house that we live in. All these things God has given to us. And so we need to be thankful. We need to remember to thank God for these things and not be selfish and not just take things for granted. And so the Lord Jesus gave thanks and he broke the bread and distributed it to the multitude. And this verse here says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John chapter 6, verse 35. And this is one of the titles of the Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of life. And back in those days, bread played such an important part of daily life. It was a, really a food that was essential for living. And so that's why the Lord Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He is the one who is essential for having real life, for having eternal life. The Lord Jesus also said, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So it's good to have life, it's good to have physical life, but we also need eternal life if we're going to be in heaven and we need to come to the Lord Jesus for our sins to be forgiven if we're going to have that eternal life that he speaks of. Now after the Lord Jesus had broken the bread, he distributed it to the disciples and they in turn distributed it to the people. And the Bible says that there were 5,000 men were fed besides women and children. And the Bible also says that they were all filled. That is, they had sufficient to eat. And the Lord Jesus said to the disciples, pick up the crumbs and put it in baskets so that nothing may be lost. 
And whenever they picked up all the fragments of bread and fish, they found that it had filled 12 baskets full. So even though 5,000 men plus women and children were, were fed and were filled, there was still plenty left over. So there wasn't anyone that was left hungry or didn't have enough to eat. All were filled and all were satisfied. And it's the same for us as well if we come to the Lord Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins, for salvation, for eternal life. We will also be satisfied. We won't be turned away empty-handed. And so whenever the people saw the miracle that was done, John's Gospel says that they would have taken the Lord Jesus and made him a king by force because they said, of a truth, this is that prophet that Moses spoke about that should come into the world. So the people recognised who he was by this miracle, but it wasn't the plan for the Lord Jesus to become king at this time because he had to go to the cross to die for our sins. And so he sent the people away and he sent the disciples away in the boat over to the other side while he, he himself went into a mountain to pray. Now whenever the disciples were in the midst of the Sea of Galilee, the Bible says there arose a great storm and the wind was contrary to them or against them and they were rowing hard as they could to get to the shore but they weren't making any headway. And perhaps the disciples were afraid because of the storm and perhaps they wondered, where is the Lord Jesus? Why has he left us to fend for ourselves? Does he not know the danger that we are in? Does he not care? And of course the Lord Jesus did care and he knew the danger that they were in and he knew exactly where they were. And this verse says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. And this is a great promise. If we are saved, if we have put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as our saviour, then he has promised always to be with us wherever we are. So we need never be afraid or dismayed. So the Lord Jesus knew exactly where the disciples were and he came to them about the fourth watch of the night walking upon the water and Mark's gospel adds that he would have passed them by. Now it's not that the Lord Jesus didn't care about them in the storm but it's as if he wanted to see whether they would call out to him for help in their time of need. And whenever the disciples saw the Lord Jesus walking on the water, they presumed that they saw a spirit and they cried out in fear. But the Lord Jesus said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And this verse says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Psalm 50 verse 15. And this is a promise of God that we, have, if we call upon him in our day of trouble, when, whenever we need help, he has promised to save us or deliver us. And as a result, we would glorify or praise him. So that's a great promise that we have that no matter what difficulty we are in, no matter what trouble we are in, the Lord says, call upon him for help. And he has promised to answer, he has promised to help us in our time of need. Now the Lord Jesus could, if he had wanted to, just stopped the storm for the disciples, but instead he comes to them walking upon the sea. And if you think why he did that, you know, surely it would be easier for the disciples if they didn't have to go into this storm, if they didn't have to call upon the Lord Jesus for help. But the Lord Jesus is showing them that no matter what circumstances they face in life, he is still in control. 
Now it is at this point in the story in Matthew's account that Peter says to the Lord Jesus, If it be thou, bid me come to thee upon the water. And the Lord Jesus bids Peter to come to him. And Peter steps out of the boat and walks upon the water towards the Lord Jesus. But we'll not cover that part of the story on this occasion. And whenever the Lord Jesus stepped into the boat, there was a great calm and the storm ceased. And the Bible says the disciples were amazed because they considered not the miracle of the loaves because their hearts were hardened. And that is, that's just to say that they took the miracle of the loaves for granted. They weren't really in a position where they needed the Lord for anything. And so they didn't really consider the, the great miracle that the Lord had performed because their hearts were hardened. But here in a, a place where they need the Lord, where they're in danger, and they see the Lord walking on the water towards them, and the, the great calm comes when he steps into the boat. Of course, they're so glad whenever the storm stopped. And it's the same for us today as well, because sometimes it's only when we face hardship and difficulty in our lives that we appreciate the Lord's presence with us and we are thankful for him being able to still the storm as well. So we should be like the disciples here in the boat and we should call out to him for salvation while there is still opportunity because he has went to the cross because the Lord Jesus went to the cross to die for our sins to take the punishment that we deserved in order that we might be forgiven. And all we have to do is to put our trust in him, to believe upon him as our saviour and he has promised that we will be saved, that we will have our sins forgiven and we will be with him in heaven for eternity. So that's the end of this week's story. And don't forget to like and share the video so that others may see it too. Thanks very much.